What you what you think about prevention point? I don't like prevention point. Why? Cause the people that work there are like all about making money and shit like that. Like mm. and like you know the people that like like they like like the people that sell drugs like run the show over there. Like mm. when I first went to prevention point, this fucking dude who's like uh, you know some kind of big drug dealer over there like. Uh, got me jumped and stomped, and they, they all just like beat my ass all right in front of all of them. The security, all prevention point, and everything. Wow. For no reason. And the security, they ain't do nothing? No, nobody would help me. Wow, that's horrible. I'm sorry, brother. So, if you can do anything differently in your life, what would you do? Uh. I would uh, stay clean the last time I got clean. Honestly, like, I should go to the hospital. What's wrong with you? I got endocarditis. Yeah, a friend of mine's died from that. So you definitely yeah, should like, take that seriously. A lot of my friends died from it. And mm -hmm. it's like, I went to the hospital before and I got treated for it, I went through the whole treatment. Mm -hmm. They said I was fine and one night I was like really cold and I just went to the hospital and like some bullshit, like I really needed some rest mm -hmm. and to go inside. So then I just went there on some like, you know what I mean? Just to be inside for a while and then fucking they're telling me I got endocarditis again. Hmm. So then I get the pick line put in and then I go, they sent me to, uh, the first time they sent me to Kenston Hospital to like, cause like when you got the pick line put in and you're doing the antibiotics. Yeah. You, um, they send you to another facility for like the, the rest of the weeks, so like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Till it's done. The first time they sent me to Kenston Hospital and then the second time they just sent me to, uh, St. John Newman uh, nursing home. Okay. So I'm in like uh, a room with like literally two senile old people and they're like screaming and like uh, like asking the nurse for help and then like the nurses are just like ignoring them hmm. because you know they're senile so it's like they forget that they're asking for help and then like you know, I asked, I I listened to this dude ask for help to go to the bathroom for literally a whole day until mm. the next morning. Wow! And so then she would just come in and talk to him, and then he would forget to ask her about the bathroom, and then she would leave him. And then, uh, but while I was there, when I was in the hospital, I was getting like a lot of like oxys and this and that, like for like the withdrawal or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the pain, and then uh, when I went to Kenson Hospital, I was like, you know, they're like, yo, they're, you're on like a lot of like, you know, pain medication. Are you interested in like methadone? And I was like, yeah, actually, I wanted to ask you about that. They're like, all right, we'll get you signed up for that. So then they cut off the oxys and all that. And they're like, all right, you just gotta get the EKG, and then uh, you, you'll be on the methadone. And I'm thinking I'm gonna get an EKG within a couple hours. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. they, and then. Turns out the nurse comes in and they're like, oh yeah, well they don't do it on the weekend and it's Friday and uh, they're probably gone, so you'll probably get it by Monday. So now, not only do I get cut off from all the withdrawal medication and I'm not getting no methadone till Monday, I also, for four days, actually the whole time I was there, I wasn't even getting my antibiotics. So for five days, I was there with no type of medicine at all, just laying in bed, with no help. So do you think the hospital is a safe place? Not at that nursing home, that nursing home should be, that's like some shit like you, you like hear about on like the news, like where like old people get beat and shit like that, like for real. Wow. Okay. Like they didn't even, like they kept telling me that the, the head nurse was too busy and this and that. And then when I was signing out to leave, the head nurse was like, oh, why are you leaving? Well, like, why didn't you just ask me? I was like, I've been asking them to ask you for days. They were like, oh, they never even said nothing to me. Like, that's crazy.
Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are here in the middle of the struggle with some real ones, and they helping to make a difference in the world by sharing their story. And they're very courageous because of the judgment that society put on people, and make them keep on running. Friends and family also judge, and you know that's not cool. People need love and support. I met a very nice young man while out here. What's your name, buddy? Freddie. How you doing, Freddie? Uh, I'm alright, I guess. Okay. How old are you? I'm 28. Wow, Freddie is very young. Where are you from originally? We're uh, here, you know, Frankfurt, Port Richmond. Okay. Is that where you was born? Yeah. I was born that right there uh, in South Philly. Okay. Tell us, what was it like in the environment you was raised up in? Um. I don't know, see, too, I was talking to this about, to some guy the other, uh, just earlier today, actually, um, you know, people come from all around and come down here and they're like, you know, want to find out where shit's at, so, you know, they ask one of the people, local people, so, and I'm talking to him, I'm like, I don't know, I guess for me, like, it's normal shit, but, like, like, you know, he's seen, like, a shooting or whatever the last time he's down here, and now he's going to, like, therapy and shit like that. And then it's just like, I don't know, that blows my mind, like somebody, like, she's, like, we see this shit every day, and it's like, we don't get no therapy or nothing like that, like, you know, yeah. a lot of us gotta have, like, fucking, like, you know, we got PTSD, like, most males in Philadelphia have PTSD, like, people get there from going to war, hmm. shit like that, you know what I mean, like, right. and don't nobody get no help, you know what I mean, a lot of, I think there's a lot of, there should be a lot more therapy given out than just suboxins and methadone. It should be a lot of therapy. So I'll tell you what, I, I, I don't do like the rehabs and all that, but when I got out of jail, they made me go to rehab, and I had this one counselor that was like really doing her job. And then, uh, you know, that's the only shit that helped me ever, really, was that counselor. Yeah. I got a lot of shit out, you know. Uh huh. My little brother is, uh, like, four or five years ago, he got sentenced to 22 to 44 years, you know what I mean? Like, I'll never see him again, pretty much. That was my right-hand man. We did everything together. Wow. Now it's like I can't trust nobody. Yeah, I hear you, bro. So, growing up, you grew up with your mom and dad? Yeah. They separated, but, like, I always had both of them. Okay. What are some of your favorite childhood memories? Um, probably going to, uh, down the shore, actually. They had, like, a, a trail, like, a, a, a like, a, a trailer, like, in, like, um, okay. a fucking campground and shit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I always like going down there and shit. Some good memories, right? Get yeah. away, nature. You like nature? Yeah, I like all that kind of shit. I, when I was younger, I used to smoke a lot of weed and shit, so like, I like being out there and then, like, I remember the first time like laying back and looking up and like actually seeing all the stars. Yeah. I'm like, wow. My friend's like, what? I'm like, look at all that. Like, <laughs> what? I'm like, you can't see the stars like that where, like, where I'm from, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, up until like a couple years ago, that's the farthest I've ever been outside of, you know, this area. Wow. So I never really knew nothing else besides this. Growing up, do you feel that you was loved or neglected? No, I feel like I was loved, just like not paid attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, I was a middle child, you know what I mean? Like me and my, my older, older brother, like the two middle, I got an older sister, older brother and a younger brother. And then for a while I had two older stepbrothers. So, you know, nobody really ever paid attention to what I was doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that was kind of like a blessing and a curse. Mm. Let's talk about school, middle school and high school. What type of student were you? Uh, I, like, academically, like, I was good, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, they wanted me, like, in high school I wound up taking AP classes and getting college credits and all, but, like, uh, I had like um, a disciplinary issue, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. in, my, my mom took me out of uh, public school like 
when I was going through uh, middle school because I was fighting a lot. And uh, then when I went back, to, I was getting homeschooled. Then when I went back to school, um, when I went to high school, it, I took, it took me four different high schools to graduate. Like I never had an academic issue. Like I was always passing, but um, I just would get expelled a lot. Why you think you had behavioral problems in school? What was it? What was the cause? Um, just like, so like I grew up in Frankfurt, so like a lot of my friends growing up were black. Mm -hmm. So then like, um, then when my mom moved like to like Port Richmond, like you know, um, it was like all white kids, and like they would, like say like I would try to act black and shit like that, and then like. You know, I wound up getting into fights and shit like that. Or people would say I was lying about like the type of lifestyle I lived and, and this and that because like, you know, ever since I was young, like I always hustled, I sold drugs and shit like that. Like, not that it's cool or nothing, but it's just like, it's something I did and then people are trying to tell me like I'm like I'm lying about what I'm doing because they think it's like cool. Mm -hmm. And they think I'm trying to look cool, but it's just, it was like my life. And like, you're not gonna tell me that I didn't go through what I went through and do what I did. Right. What's the highest level of education you completed? I, mean, I graduated high school. And what do you, what do you do after high school? Um, well, after that, that's when uh, my brother got sentenced. And then uh, my grandma died and then like when my brother got locked up, I was scared I was gonna get locked up too, so I stopped going to the house. And I was just out here hustling, 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 getting high, hustling, getting high, hustling, just like on the block for like three days. Then I'll go to my friend's house, go to sleep, and then go back out for another three days. I would work three shifts. I would work the graveyard, the morning shift, and graveyard. Then the next morning in graveyard shift, I'll go sleep, and then I'll come back out. And I did that for like, five weeks and during that time uh well my phone had got stolen and from uh, like falling asleep outside and shit like that well actually falling asleep on the l charging my phone and then uh in that time if i would have just signed on to facebook i would have seen that there were my family's messaging me because my grandma was in the hospital like dying and like you know i was the only person she was asking for the whole time and then when I finally uh, checked my messages, it was uh, it was like right after, like literally like a couple hours after she passed. Wow, so sorry. So I didn't get to see her or whatever. Mm-hmm, that must have hurt you a lot, right? The lifestyle kept you away from Yeah, things. so then I just like kept going. Yeah. And kept going and kept going and kept going and then now it's just been it's been years. So currently out here, what drugs are you battling? Uh, dope. I just like dope. How were you introduced to that? Uh, when I was younger, like, uh, all the old heads in like Puerto Rican, like they did oxys and shit like that, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And then, uh, so I started doing them. Then they stopped making them. And you know, I started doing dope. And then uh, they stopped making, they stopped selling dope, and only selling fentanyl, so then they started doing that, and then now they're selling trank, they mix the trank in without saying nothing. And now that's even, like, the the withdrawal from that is so fast, like, that one kid was just saying, like, you know, he just woke up and he was sick already. You know, you're just opening your eyes from fucking getting well and getting high, and then now you're already sick again, and you gotta get more, like, yeah. It's not like a manageable thing like before like I could Like how are you supposed to go home and like You know what I mean like I don't get how people come from different states and shit like that and then go back there and then I don't understand how they do it. I can't even go five stops away on the L. Hmm. So currently out here in Kensington, how much would you say you spend on your habit? Um, lately it's, it hasn't been a lot because like I've been fucked up a lot and like I don't want to go out and steal or boost or nothing like that. Like I don't like stealing so it's like 
and then the hustle on the blocks it's like now they're letting a lot of people who get high hustle and they're like hustling for like five hours a bundle and shit like that and it's wow. like or like they'll they'll want you to stay on the block even like knowing that you're gonna get booked so it's like, and then they, these idiots keep doing it, so it's like I refuse to do it. What's the most, how much do you make when you work on a block in a day? How much you make? I mean, in a day, like, like anymore, it's, it's really, it's not that good no more, but like, just not that long ago, I was case working, I'm not gonna say where, but uh, I was turning in 45 on a bundle, you know, a bundle's 80. So, and then I was letting people make, uh, I was letting them turn me in 65. Mm. Don't you get it? Don't you get scared working on a block? You know, they got shootouts, cops. It's weird. It's like, yeah, some of my friends says to me, like, why don't you, wouldn't you rather feel safer, like, going into the store and boosting, but I feel safer on the block hustling. But only, like, when I'm, like, like hustling for people like I that will let me move how I want to move, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. So what's the worst thing that you have seen or have experienced since you've been out here? Um, the worst thing I've seen... Uh, I mean, it's hard to pick like one particular thing. Like, you know, I've I seen everything out here. I've seen people get shot, you know, people uh, uh, get hot shots, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I've seen um, people overdose and die. I've seen people get hot veined and have a seizure until they die. I've seen people, uh, you know, have an infection and just not go to the hospital, die from that. Um, Dangerous lifestyle, right? Yeah, especially since they started introducing the, the trank, you know, it's been a lot more death, a lot faster. Yeah, absolutely. And abscesses, too, on a lot of people, right? Yeah, well, the trank, you know, like, like, like one of them is xylazine, and, you know, if you look it up, they try to get it approved for human consumption, mm -hmm. and it didn't get approved, uh, because on 40% of people, it causes skin lesions or, you know, the abscesses. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, some people are like, oh, it's from missing or, you know, like missing a vein or something like that. But it's not because people who snort it get it, get them, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like either you're one of the 40% of people or you're not. You're going to get them or you don't. Got you. So what's 24 hours in Kensington look like for you? For me, I mean, a day in your life. It's different every day anymore, you know what I mean? It used to be the same thing every day. Go to the block, hustle, and then, you know, go get high, sleep, eat, and then come back out. But now anymore, it's like, since I don't feel comfortable on any of these blocks or, like, you know what I mean, not getting the right money or whatever the situation might be. I just been like scrambling like anymore like you know random shit all the time like like I don't even know how to explain it like literally like I'll just wake up and start walking and then like just shit mm -hmm. falls comes into play like I don't know so I'm gonna be like yo you wanna go do this or make this or you know you wanna go to work or right you know what I mean what was the first legal job you had First legal job I had, mm -hmm. uh, doing building maintenance with my dad growing up. So like, you know, like when you're renting a, an apartment or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you call your landlord to get something fixed. Yeah. And my dad was, I mean, my dad were like the guy, the people who come over and fix whatever in your house. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I can fix anything in your house, anything. Nice. So what all have you lost due to your addiction? Uh, everything. Like what? I lost my brother. I lost, you know, the chance to talk to my grandma before she passed in my time with her. Um, losing time with my mom, my relationship with my nephew, my niece. Mm. You know, he used to look up to me like, like, 
Like, people thought he was my son. I was with him so much. Oh, yeah. And it's just like relationships, like, you know what I mean? Like, I used to, like, I used to go out and I would chill, chill with girls 24-7, you know what I mean? Like, I was just chasing a girl or with a girl, like, and now it's like I don't even, like, uh, like, I don't even spend no time, like, you know, who wants to hang out with a girl, like, looking like this or being like this, you know what I mean? So shame and guilt keep you back, right? Yeah, definitely. How much you used to weigh before? Um, I mean, pretty much, just, like, I don't know, I bounce around, like, one, between, like, 140 and 180. Okay. What's your living status right now? Uh, like, I mean... I guess technically homeless because it's not like I stay with my friend at my friend's house, but it's not mine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your incarceration. What was your experience, the good and the bad? Um, I guess like the good was like um, no actually having that time you know pretty much clean like even though I was taking the subs for a while in there um you know that's the longest time I had clean since like I started using okay actually no that's not true because I was clean for a while when I was when I grow I mean it's 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 it was good for me because I started to like really like wall out you know what I mean like so what's the longest clean time you had Probably like almost like three years when I was with my ex. What triggered you into using? Um, just like, I don't know, I got like, uh, I was in a relationship and then I started to get into my head, like, you know what I mean? Like, start caring too much about what other people thought and then all of a sudden that affects my feelings and then I just wasn't happy with where I was and then that was what was tuning it out and then the whole situation with my brother or whatever and then after that happened I mean I figured it was pretty much a matter of time until like me and him were both in jail forever mm -hmm. got you so now all the stuff that you have experienced in life in your hard times what can you, what lessons can you pass to the next generation? Um, I would say like, you know, everything that I, everything that I found interesting, everything I liked, everything I was into, if I, you know, I was told was corny, was this, was that, and I shouldn't, and I was ashamed of the things I liked and the things I did and the way I was. And now it's like the it's like the the popular way to be like you know like wearing thrasher and like skateboarding and like you know like all that type of shit like like if I would have just stayed like who I really was I would be a whole lot happier right now. Got you. What are your short term goals now? My short term goals. I guess like if like. You really care about somebody or love somebody that's like addicted, like pushing them away or punishing them for anything that they do isn't like the best thing. I'm not saying to enable anybody, but like you got to keep giving them another chance. Like keep giving them another chance, no matter how many times they mess up or anything like that. And I'm not saying like people who like are like obviously taking advantage of you or anything like that, but like I feel like there's times like. Like the ways like that I messed up and then like not being like accepted back in with my family. Really like I don't think they really understand how much like I'm not blaming them for anything or anything like that, but I don't think they understand that. Um, like I really needed that help. Well, brother, I just want to let you know that when you are ready for the help, the help is available. There are resources, and I know it's not the best, but at least it's something to get you started, you know? Yeah. Okay, so let's get off topic to get to know you as an individual when we're done, okay? Mm. 
What are some things you love most about yourself? Um, I, I, I like uh, like the way I can figure out how like anything works. Like I can take anything apart and put it back together. Nice. And like um. What's your zodiac sign? Uh, Capricorn. Capricorn. Yeah. Shout out to all the Capricorns yeah. we out there. Yeah. When you was growing up, what did you want to become as a kid? Um. Mm. Honestly, at first, like I always wanted to like work in the trades. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Like, you know, working with my dad and like doing the building maintenance, I always wanted to get like certified, you know what I mean? Like, cause I know what I'm doing, but I wanted to get certified so like I could actually be like taken serious and like start my own business. Yeah. But what, uh -huh. now I want to do dive welding, underwater welding. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What are some of your favorite foods? Oh man, I don't know. I love everything. One of my favorite foods to make is uh, chicken cacciatore. Okay, all right. When was the last time you had some of your favorite food? Man, long time. Long time. A couple years. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Do you have a favorite band or artist you listen to? Um. It's hard to pick, like... Mm -hmm. If you had to pick five, your top five, what would it be? Probably, like, recently... I've been listening to, like... You know, like... MGK, Lil Dirt, um... I forget if it's the baby or little mm -hmm. baby. <laughs> right. It's two little baby. The one, the one is like really smart though. Like, uh, it's one of them, right? Yeah, he's like, he's like talks about like a lot of real shit. Okay. And uh, I used to listen to a lot of J.D. Kiss. Nice. And then um. I like like Push I see and like I used to listen to like Gucci Man too. Okay, all right. Yeah. He got some nice flavor on his playlist. I can <laughs> rock with him. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's what's up. Yeah. Are you a daytime or nighttime person? Night. Nighttime Why? person, definitely. Wow. I don't know, it's like that's like the way my body likes to operate. I like I don't know. I'm okay. just out there at night, that's my you know, that's my it's not seen, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I always, like... You a night you know, There's not a lot of people, like, judging you at night. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you mm -hmm. could just go and do your thing and, like, nobody's really paying attention to what you're doing, because... Got you. So, if you had to pick one or the other, if you had to pick to fly or to be invisible, which one would you pick? No, definitely fly. Why? Because you can fucking fly. <laughs> like, be above it all, right? Yeah, like... Yeah, that's what's up. What's your favorite season of the year? Um, it used to be winter, but now I'd say summer. Why? Because I'm tired of the fucking cold. It <laughs> keeps getting colder and colder in Philly. Like, I don't know what that's about. Yeah. Are you currently in a relationship? No, I don't know. What do you look for in a partner? I guess like, you know, like, I don't know, like, you remember like back in the day, like it used to be like the pretty girls were the ones hard to get and like, mm -hmm. you know, like no offense, but like the ugly girls were like the easy ones. <laughs> and now it's like the other way around. It's just like, I just want like somebody who's like real, like, you know, mm -hmm. like somebody you could trust, like, like, I, I would want a girl, like, I could trust, like, to, like, all right, here, like, I could leave my nephew with them, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100. Like, I can't imagine having a kid with, 
any of these girls out here. Got you. If your friends and your family see this video, what message do you want to send to them? Take your time. I know it's emotional, you know? All the time you need, buddy. I guess it's like, I'm sorry and that I love them. Say that one more time. I said, I guess it's like, I'm sorry and that I love them. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm sure they love you too. It's just that some people don't understand the depth of addiction and they get frustrated but why their friends or their family cannot beat this disease yeah like why do i choose to be out here and this and that and like mm -hmm. you know every time like i see somebody like from like like before like i started like staying out here all the time like mm -hmm. i didn't have to stay out here all the time when i did i just chose to because i didn't want to go back like yeah. i didn't want to deal with anything so i just kept staying out and staying out and staying out and now it's like people like they're like when they see me like they don't believe it like like especially like I said like I used to like always be with girls and they'll mm -hmm. be like wow like that's not it. like when they recognize me finally they're like they start crying and they're just yeah. like they're seeing you like you don't mm -hmm. got a haircut like yeah like you like you always kept money like you always had a haircut like you always like you would never ever be like this yeah you was you was a fly guy yourself your appearance meant a lot to you because you know people judge you by appearance so I understand what you're going through but you can change this whole picture around whenever you're ready and I believe you can do it so many of our brothers and sisters have done it you know if you had three wishes what would your three wishes be I wish um I wish uh, my little brother never got locked up. I wish I would have seen my grandma before she passed. And I wish I would have just went home. Right. You're absolutely right, brother. And I pray your situation changed for the better. Is there anything that you're in need of that we can help you with? I mean, not that I can think of. I mean, really, it's like uh, one thing I don't understand is like, I don't know, like this whole fucking triple one status thing and all that shit. Just because I never checked in nowhere, like I've been out here longer than any of these people. Any of them. And like, because I don't check in with some people with a clipboard, like, uh, I'm not gonna get help. It's crazy. Yeah. So guys, I wanna tell Freddie, thank you so much for opening up and you know, pouring his heart out. Hopefully this video resonate with somebody and you guys can help him. Drop all the positive comments you have for him. And we'll stay connected, you know? Yeah. So guys, remember, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out. Yeah, there we go.